Hey, you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Let me welcome you to another weekly edition of Happy Hour with the Lincoln. This is where week by week, I'll do my best to answer all of your stock market related questions. I'll rant about certain stock market topics, or maybe I'll share a story with you that I've learned over two decades as a trader, all in the attempts to help you become more professional and successful at what it is you love to do, and that's trading some stocks. So before I get started in today's talk, let me remind you guys once again that this year's mini camp, that's right, this year's mini camp starts on Monday. I only do a couple of these a year, and it is the most popular course at the Lincoln List. And in this course, I'm going to be talking about my four main stock trading strategies, and my four main option trading strategies. And I'm going to go into a bunch of other stuff such as psychology, risk management, scanning for stocks, all that good stuff. Everything that it takes for you to become successful and most of the things that I've learned over the last two decades that I feel are the most important things. And I'm sure a course like this will help you at least take that next step in the evolution of your trading career. So what I'm going to do here is post up two links. The first link that I'm posting is to a webinar I did just a couple of days ago. It's also posted on this channel. This goes into complete detail of how we train traders through Minicamp and why most of them become successful after taking the course. The next link I'm going to post will be to the direct website of Minicamp. Talks a little bit more about our educational content and everything. But I do hope I see each and every one of you there. If you are someone that's really taking your trading career seriously and you're stuck in a rut and you really want to take that next step regardless of what your trading strategies is or your methodology, this is a course that will definitely help you because it helps you build the right kind of trader foundation. So again, hope I see each and every one of you there. So here's what I'm going to talk about. I know I know you guys read the headline and I used the M word, which is a million dollars. Everybody loves to talk about a million dollars. And this is a question I get on a regular basis, which is how do you make a million dollars trading stocks? How do I take this tiny sum of a couple of hundred bucks or a couple of thousand bucks and how do I turn that into a million dollars? How do I become a millionaire? And this millionaire thing, the million dollar word, it's, it's a nice milestone and it's a great benchmark, especially if you don't have a million dollars or you are not a millionaire. It's a great goal to have. Now, I want to set the tone for this talk because the first thing I want to say to each and every one of you is that it's really not that it's not that difficult to come up or to obtain $1 million. Yes, you heard that right. I said it is not that difficult to obtain a $1 million. But what I didn't say was that it was fast. You see, the misconception that you have these days, well, it's always been that way, especially with all the marketers. It started you know, back in the 80s and stuff with John Woo and Don LaPree and everybody, and it it still continues with most of today's marketing material, especially in the stock market industry, where everybody leads you to believe that you can have a small amount of money, and in a very short amount of time, you can turn this into an obsessive amount of money and change your life. I mean, you've heard this story before. Most these stories are all the same as a poor person with not two pennies to rub together, getting divorced, one bedroom apartment, discovers a system, and then a couple months later, they're this multi-billionaire living a high life and now they want to share it with you. This is where the problem comes in because everyone thinks that it should happen and it should happen quickly. Now, we'd all love for that to happen, but that's just not normally the scenario. And I think it was Warren Buffett that said it. I know I'm going to chop the hell out of this quote. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post it up here somewhere, the actual verbatim quote, because I'm sure I'm going to misquote it because I don't remember it. But he says, everybody wants to be rich. They just don't want to take the time to, to do it. So what I'm saying here is, in, in order for you, if, if this is a goal of yours and you want to be a millionaire and you want to obtain wealth, the way that's done is through what I always talk about with trading itself is through consistency. You've got to be consistent and you've got to be d- disciplined. So when you're looking at your life, I don't care what path it is that you take from here, what business that it is you go into, what business that you're in, what part of your life that it's in. If there's anything that you want to achieve, let's just put those two words in there. If there's anything that you want to achieve in life and have success from it, you need those two traits. I've talked about that before. Consistency and discipline. Consistency and discipline. And if you want to be rich in the stock market, that's how you're going to do it. Because when I look back on my career, which I've been very open to all of you guys about, is I have never had a really humongous winning trade, like a $50,000 winner or a six-figure winner. I've never made 
my money that way. Now I've had probably, I mean, maybe back in 2000s, I had some 30, 40 K winners back in, 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 in those days, but that was a different time. And as you know, I lost that money too, because I was not consistent or disciplined, but you know, once I got my, my shit together, so to speak, my, my wins are usually $500 to $700, but there's a lot of them and they happen on a consistent basis. And I, I trade day by day. I look at it as a job and I've been able to average over six figures a year, you know, for the last, well, 14 years now, 15 years or something like that. So how I've actually reached the million dollar mark in my life, because I've made a lot of mistakes. You know, I've talked about my bike store in the past where that bankrupted me. I talked about having to borrow money to get back into the trading business in the mid 2000s. You know, so I wasn't, I wasn't a millionaire then. What was the difference? Well, I got it like most people end up getting it is I lived a little bit under my means. I saved my money every month and I reinvested it as I made it. So I had a specific amount I wanted to save every month, with, which I still do. And I dedicate that money to, to my savings. Now, I, that was in my 30s. You know, like now I'm in my, in my 50s. So if, if I'm talking to somebody that's, uh, you know, under that, you're in your 20s, you should get there even faster. You know, it, it shouldn't, it, you should get there a lot quicker than I did. And even if you screwed up, like I had several times throughout my 20s and 30s, you still can rebuild it. Hell, if you're even starting at my age when you're 50 now, if you stay committed and you, st you have discipline, that you can do it. Now, I think I learned this lesson hands-on. Let me just kind of take you back because I've posted a few pictures and talked about this story before. When I first got my, my first really nice job in insurance, I was making over six figures a year, and this was like 92 and 93. So that was a, that was a shit ton of money back then for a 23-year-old kid, you know, making 150K a year I mean, in the 90s when gas was like 80 cents a gallon. I mean, that's, that was a lot of money. I don't know what that would translate to today, but it was big. And I never had money growing up, you know, we weren't dirt poor, but we didn't have, we just had enough to live, live, you know, electric food and clothes for school. We never had any of the cool amenities, like, you know, parents didn't have money to buy us cars and video games and all that good stuff. I mean, we just got by. So I never experienced money. So when I first got it, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to just, because I thought if I never have it again, I want to know what it feels like to be rich. And I bought a, a Corvette and a Porsche and a BMW. So here I'm this 23-year-old kid living in a penthouse on the beach with three cars. You can only drive one. I bought a bunch of bikes. I mean, I just I just bought everything. And to an extent, that, that turned out to be a good thing because once that wore off, that nostalgia of owning those and showing those items off to my friends and bragging about them to family members and stuff like that, acting like I was a badass kid when I was just a punk. But once that nostalgia wore off, the stress of making those payments was a killer. I mean, I had like $2,600 a month in freaking car payments in the 90s, man, in the 90s. And I was like, geez, I'm leveraged to the hilt, the credit cards and everything. So I just couldn't keep that, that up. Like I, ha I had no money. I mean, I, like I said, I was making 150K a year and I barely had any money, like cash, paper, money in hand if for emergencies and stuff. So what I eventually did, you know, when, when I, I started you know, getting rid of that stuff and, and trying to scale down a little bit. And then obviously, like when I started the bike store and everything and I you know, blew up my accounts trading and went broke and all of that my perception of money completely changed. The things that I thought were important in life, the material things, I already sort of had my run with that and I already had my experiences with that. So it wore off. And, you know, I promised myself that if I ever made money again, I would do things differently. And that's what I did. So, you know, to make a long story short, once things started clicking for me in trading, the first thing I decided to do is like, look, I'm not going to go back into debt. So I want to share some of this stuff with you because I think, you know, if you're younger than I am or no matter where you are, this, this these, these are just keys to getting a million dollars. I mean, you got to have this discipline. So the very first thing that I said is I will never, if possible, I will not go back into debt. I just won't do it. You know, credit cards, all that stuff, you know, sure you can use them for airline miles, but pay them off. Don't want to have any unnecessary debts hanging over my head. I've always been 
an advocate about that debt thing or always been a, a preach that debt. It's like that's the, that's like the modern day version of slavery. You know, they get you into debt, the banks, the government, they get you into debt. And if you're into debt and you've got payments that you have every month that you have to make, you become a slave to the system, right? So if you think about what I'm talking about, just kind of get off topic here for a second. That's the reason why many people are disappointed in their lives is because they're working for survival because you can't quit your job. You can't pursue what it is that you want to do because you're too busy paying off all of the shit that you bought that you really didn't need in the first place. So fortunately for me, I took that sort of method and I just eliminated debt. If I couldn't buy it in cash, I just did not want it. I learned to live without it. And then I committed a certain amount of money that I would reinvest, you know, into the market, into certain market instruments, my 401ks and stuff like that. And I'd have my trading account that I would be aggressive with and trade with. And then I would have my investment accounts that I would be, you know, a little bit more longer term oriented on those. And I continued to make monthly installment payments. And as I made money, more money, I increased that amount. Then I eventually paid off my home, which has increased you know, three or four times in value since I bought, bought the place in early 2000, 2001 or something like that. So to answer this, to put this all into perspective for you guys, the way that it came about was I never made $1 million in a single year trading stocks. I've managed to make some really nice six-figure incomes for the last 15 years. And what I've done is lived on about 50% of that money and the other 50% I've saved. And through saving, through investing, through purchasing things in real estate and property and patience over those 15 to 20 years, I have, you know, <laughs> superseded that mark, okay? So what I'm saying is that if that's what you want, especially if you're a young, young person, if you're out there in your 20s right now, just start putting a little bit of money away. You'd be surprised what two to $300 a month, what you normally would pay for in a new car while your friends are out there driving new cars and stuff, rubbing it in like the jackass I was when I was younger. If you just put that three to $400 away every month, you'll be surprised how that adds up over time with your you know, reinvestment of things. You know, just invest it in the damn spy in the market, a market instrument, and reinvest your dividends and all that good stuff, and you'll be surprised. You might not be exactly at a million dollars when you get 50, but you'll have, a, you'll have a substantial amount of money. So the key to all of this, if that's what you guys are looking for, and this goes with any business, you know, not just the money you save, but the way you live your life and the business. Always think about consistency first. Being consistent you know, constantly get a consistent check, a consistent income, investing money consistently on a regular basis. That's number one to make, to helping you get rich. The second part is staying committed to that because like I said, I didn't become a millionaire overnight. It was something that spanned several years of consistent trading, consistent profits and investing. And again, I'm not the one out there buying the Lambos living in the Miami Beach penthouse, standing on the top of my Rolls Royce pitching DVDs. No, I could buy that stuff, but then that deters me away from my goal. Now on the same, on the same side of that, I'm not telling you that you need to eat bologna sandwiches. I know a lot of people that were like that. There was this lady in the town I was born in. She worked in a factory and saved up a million dollars, but she brought her own lunch, never went on vacation, never got married, you know, never retired and she died in the factory at 78 years old with like $3 million worth of cash and never spent it. Like she never, she never spent it. She lived in like a trailer, like a little tiny home. So, I mean, you do have to spend some of it, but just budget yourself. Take, you know, like I said, I'm fortunate enough that I make a high enough income that I can live comfortably off of half of what I, I bring in. I, I, I don't have a lavish spending habit anymore. I'm really basic lifestyle, but again, those are the keys that help you become rich. If you're somebody that wants to be a millionaire, remember, you can do it. In fact, it's relatively easy. It just takes you some time. Just be disciplined, be consistent, commit to the time. You'll get there. So anyway, guys, I want to thank you. I hope I shed some education on you once again. Thanks for watching this version of Happy Hour. Till next week, cheers.